In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christ is in our midst. So today the pilot arrived early and the gate was open early, so the plane left earlier. You'll get my joke afterwards. So as we prepare for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we are preparing that not only to celebrate the little baby Jesus who's going to be born in a few weeks, but we also are reminded that the ultimate goal of our life as Christians is to give birth to Christ, to be the Theotokos who would give birth to Christ to the world. Otherwise, the work of the Lord would have stopped long time ago. It's on us to continue to work with Him and to be the ones who will bring Christ to the world in the midst of the chaos and hatred that we see around us. We heard today in the epistle that St. Paul was very clear about what he was telling the Ephesians. You are to be members of the household of God. You are not strangers or sojourners. You're not just here temporary. You are the sons and daughters of God himself. And to be so, we have to be prepared so that we would not get to the point, as with the gospel that we heard today about the rich man who was not prepared, so we would be called fool because we were not ready. We were like the rich man who was full of himself and was not rich toward God. So as a way to prepare, I thought that it is important every now and then to be reminded of the basics as when you go to your primary care physician for your annual visit, he will remind you of the good habits that you should be doing, the medications that you should be taking, and the bad habits that you should be quitting. He will tell you everything that should be good for you or bad for you, so that you continue to be healthy and functional, and at the end, it's on you. You will be responsible to follow the advice of the physician because otherwise, the physician would not be affected, actually, right? So today, it's my obligation, in a way, to remind myself and every one of us what it means to be the family of God at the basic level. I don't want to shame anyone, because I myself fall into some of the things that I want to talk about. But as a father, I do that to my own children, and as the father of this community, I have to say that to my own children, so that my responsibility in the end, as in my household, it's here in the church, to create an environment where everyone is motivated to have a connection and to grow spiritually and to have an intimate, fruitful, and healthy relationship with God. So that's the basis of what I'm going to talk about today. If that pokes your heart, it's fine. I don't want to shame anyone. As I said, I want our hearts to be motivated to do the right thing as long as we live. I've said this many times, the church is not a building. It's a community of people who come into a space, big or small, it does not matter where they all come together as a community to encounter God, to receive communion, to share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come together to worship. Worship is not just doing certain things. In worship, we are reminded, we remind ourselves of our origin and our mission in the world so that we can take the grace that we receive here and go out for our daily lives to continue that mission. It does not end here or within the walls of this building. So we are reminded that we are broken and how the divine love and compassion can transform us first so that we can transform the world outside. So church is not for entertainment and church is not a concert where we come to feel good about ourselves. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The church is a place where we come to be challenged. 
to learn how to work with God so that we be his missionaries into the world of our daily lives. The prayer, any service, is not done to us. We're all active participants by being in the pews, sometimes as small as saying, Lord, have mercy and amen. There's no point of seeing, saying all the petitions unless there's someone who would confirm them and say, Lord, have mercy and amen. In this space and outside, it is important to remember that respect is something that's very valuable. Because in, re in respect, what does respect mean in itself? Is that we understand our size in front of everything that was created by God. We know how limited we are in terms of us being created in front of the Creator who made us, who through His love and compassion we continue to live. So respect seems to be, unfortunately, vanishing from public life in our culture. There are few places where respect has certain criteria to live by or to act by. One example I'm reminded, and definitely the military, is one place where respect is something very important. So in, a, in the presence of a fallen soldier, when he's wrapped with a, with, a, um, with a flag, with a U.S. flag, we have to behave in a respectful way. In, this, in front of the sacrifice of a human being for our own freedom, it is important to remember that we have to behave respectfully. And similarly, as being the sons and daughters of God the King, as being the sons of daughters and daughters of the, of the royal family, we have to behave in a way that reflects who we are and reflects our mission in the world inside the church and outside. Because being Christian is not a badge of honor. Being Christian does not mean that just because I was born into a Christian family, it stops there. That's why I am Christian, because my parents decided to baptize me when I was a child. Now that I am an adult, I have to decide to be Christian. Either I am up to the challenge of what it means to be Christian or not. Because in the end, Christianity is not for everyone. Let me repeat this. Christianity is not for everyone. Just like medical school, law school, and professional sports league is not for everyone. You have to work for it. We have in a way, to reflect the respect that we have to our Creator in the small things and the big things. So arriving on time, or the time that's spent in church, should be reflective of how we respect our Creator and how we respect our mission in the world. I'm surprised that in concerts or when we are invited to wedding receptions, we're always on time, probably sometimes earlier. And when we have a flight, we are in the airport two or three hours before the flight time, and no one complains about it, right? It's funny that there's no TSA agent or a flight attendant at the gate will accommodate anyone for saying, I live 40 minutes away from the airport or there was so much traffic on the way, so you have to let me go into the plane even if the boarding was done. But how come when we are invited to a banquet with God and we are invited to the presence of God, we take it lightly? because he does not have a TSA agent or a flight attendant at the door to kick us out. I did the math for you. In a regular week, every week, there's 168 hours. If you spend eight hours sleeping, there's still 
every day, there is still 112 hours of your waking days. If you are in church between 9 and 1, if you leave your house at 9 in the morning and you get home at 1, taking one hour commute to get to church, although I know many of us are less than one hour, this is only four hours a week. Four hours out of the 112 is merely 3.5% of our waking hours during the week. 3.5. If we spend an hour every day watching the news, that's 6.25% of our waking hours. That's just one hour. I know that more of us spend more than one hour, not only on the news, but also on social media. And let alone how many advertisements there are. Okay, there are so much and they're very repetitive and no one complains about that, it seems, because we continue to watch TV. So in church, there are also other things that are reflective of respect. One of them, modest clothing. Not because anyone wants to control anyone's what they're wearing, but just so that you come here, be comfortable about being here in the presence of God. You don't have to worry about what you're wearing and trying to fix it because this is a place where you come to worship and do connect with God himself. And that does not apply only on Sundays, but also applies for baptisms and weddings. And let me not start on what happens on those days. If we have to check our cell phones, I put it in there. There's a QR code in all of these for you to follow the service. So it's okay to use your cell phone, but only to follow the service. No one of us needs during this 3.5% of our week to check our phones. So please use your phone sparingly, but mainly to follow the service. Other things that older generations taught their kids, but now this generation is just way ahead of the curve because we are more modernized, whatever that word means. Crossing legs is not appropriate in church. Chewing gum or having our hands in pockets. Again, it's not because someone wants to control what we do in church, but this is reflective of our attentiveness and readiness to stand wherever needed and to be attentive to what we're doing. Having our hands in pockets is not appropriate, chewing gum is not, and crossing our legs is absolutely not. So I pray that we use this time as we get closer to Christmas to realign our life with what really matters. There are so many things out there that will take our attention for the rest of this year. But let's take some time and realign our life with our mission and our goal in life, to be truly the family of God so that we can be his co-workers when any disaster happens outside, we are there to bring his love, his compassion, and his mercy to the entire world. Amen.